What do you think your most awkward chairlift moment's ever been? Probably this. <laughs> so you've been skiing here your whole life? Yeah. My parents used to change my diapers up here in the lot. <laughs> I was a little guy. I like the old lifts. Yeah, me too. They have more character to them. There are worse ways to be spending a Tuesday. The same. The chairlift really dramatically changed the sport. It was what brought skiing, you know, into the forefront. Aside from skiing and snowboarding, there's nothing else like it in any other sport where you have this completely individual experience on the way down. And then you come together at the bottom and get on this contraption and ride back up to the top. You're never ever gonna forget that. I can remember my first day on a chairlift. No matter what gear you're on or where you're skiing, it's sort of, you feel like you're part of this, like this club that you're a skier and you get to do it and you get to be with your friends and you get to experience it with strangers. I mean, if it wasn't for the chairlift, we'd still be hiking up mountains. <laughs> People are very passionate about where they live and very passionate about like their chair lifts and, and they think that's the best. What's your favorite lift? Seventh uh, Heaven. Chair number four. Chair 22. Can I yell that? Number three. Without a doubt, chair one at Mount Baker. Dr. Sitzer. Wildcat at Alta. Standish. Looking Glass at Winter Park Resort. Good single at Mad River Glen. Can't go wrong on this chair. Yeah. Been a first chair every time. His name is First Chair Bruce. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Just, that's yeah, that's how I know it. Him. Oh. On a powder day, I know exactly what chair I'm going to go to. I know exactly what run I'm going to ski. It's funny because there's even rivalry within a ski resort about which chair is better. Oh, you see that one? Well, this one's better. Oh, you go there, that one's better. I think there's a, an unlimited number of lines that you can pick up here and it never gets boring which is what is so awesome and even when we don't have great powder and our great snow it's still fun and like exciting yeah right off of that little tree right there and it's super clean landing that's like one of the funnest things you can do when you go skiing is meet up with like that local passionate person that like wants you to have the best time at their resort The idea of speed gives you more is something that's, that, that is, you know, people are demanding of their ski areas. Well, you see it like everyone's trying to put in high speed six packs, and now there's what, an eight pack. Um, and there's this like, you're trying to get to the top faster and faster and get more runs. As the way we live gets faster, for me personally, the idea of actually slowing down is, is more attractive than it's ever been. These, these older chairlifts with, you know, doubles are a bit slower. You kind of, it just like slows you down a bit. And, and you can kind of sit back and just sort of take it all in. And, you know, it's cold, so you're not taking your phone out. You're sort of really actually slowing down and experiencing just being here in the mountains. Those old chairlifts were, were kind of like the hubs of the community. And, and I think that's why people hold on to them so dearly. If I try to think of a chairlift that sort of embodies this, at least here in the Pacific Northwest, the first one that comes to mind is the Seventh Heaven Chair at Stevens Pass. Seventh Heaven was built in 1961. It is the steepest of chairlifts in North America. It's, like, it's pretty much straight up. Yeah. Yeah, there's like no bar. <laughs> no thing that comes down. You go to get on that lift, 
and you're looking up at that rock face and realizing that you're about to go on to something that's pretty unique, pretty steep. It's like, takes us back to like simpler yeah. life, you know what it I'm does. saying? There's a charm to it. Do you know the Seventh Heaven Chair Whistler is named after this one? No, I did not know that. Yeah, I just learned that. By chance, it was our seventh lift on Blackcomb, and being the Seventh Heaven ride 25 years earlier popped into mind, and that's how the name Seventh Heaven came about from that that ride at Stevens Pass. Nice little tidbit of information. I, we're full of it today. You're full of it today? Is that what you just yeah, said? Yeah, we've got all the history. You're full of it today. Full of it. Okay, good. <laughs> it's amazing to think that lifts have been turning here for almost 100 years. That's Rope that's toes cool. have been burning gloves off kids' hands. <laughs> it's been happening for a long time. Yeah. The ski culture here at Stevens is pretty distinct compared to some of the other ski areas around. Yes, sir. There's not a lot of ego and there's a lot of terrain. Hey! Woo! First run. Love the ride. <laughs> it's been awesome all day. I'm glad it is. I'm really lucky. I got yeah. I got what I think is the best resort in you know the northwest 100 percent I mean in my personal opinion, you know, probably the United States. I'm sure a lot of people would argue that. Yeah. But well, the chairlift's the best seat in the house. I mean, skiing is a show-off sport. The, the, the steepest terrain tends to be under the lift because that's the most direct way to the top. So a lot of times, when you're up there, you're getting that bird's eye view of, of the jumps and the, and the best skiers on the hill. And Yeah, you might throw that backy or 360 that you never would have done normally, but you got that chairlift courage. Here at Whistler, watching people, you know, coming down uh, was was part of the whole experience. For everyone watching from the bottom in the lift line, like you're part of the show. Like you're up there in the show. You don't need TV. You don't need Instagram. You, it's happening right live for you. Talk about anything bad, huh? <laughs> I, I find you can learn the most interesting things on chairlifts. Yeah? 50 years. You're not that old, man. You skied 37 runs today. Lost 50 pounds. And you're full of surprises. There was just the two of you, so whether it's a family member, a friend, or somebody that you just met that uh, yelled single at the back of the lift line. How's it going? Ryan. Ryan Hayden. Nice to meet you, Hayden. Yeah. You met some great looking women. Uh, I mean, I got a date. I met my wife on a chairlift. I actually proposed to her on skis, on snow, on Valentine's Day. Well, in light of Valentine's Day, what's your uh, favorite pickup line? Favorite pickup? <laughs> Let's go ski. Let's go skiing. <laughs> it's one of those trailers where you are sitting and your like legs are touching the person next to you. And I was sort of seeing this guy, and we, he would just over and over, he'd be like, let's lap, let's lap the sea chair. We ski that chairlift pretty much every day for like a week and we ended up calling it the makeout chair. <laughs> I got the chance to ride up the red chair with Pierre Trudeau, our prime minister at the time. How often do you get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with the Prime Minister of Canada, especially when you're uh, a 20-year-old? Deep snowpacks been maybe known to get off before the top of the lift and, uh, you know, jump off into a snowbank. <laughs> so you used to jump off the chairlift? You know, if the powder's good and you're trying to beat somebody to it. <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> yeah, you're too young to know. Back I... in the old days when 
people had contests saying who could swing the chairs the most. Oh. Who could get them? Have you ever been in a bouncing contest? No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been up yet? No. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, 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 my wife probably. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 I saw someone rip the hair. I don't think that the chairlift probably gets the credit that uh, it should for what it has done for the sport of skiing. Ski culture has created towns. It's created a language. It's created a lifestyle. The priority is passion. It's not money. It's not your job, success. It's an escape from reality. There are hundreds of things that have contributed to skiing and, and ski culture over the years, but if you peel back all the layers and, and get right down into the center of it. I'm pretty sure you'll find a chairlift. What's a pirate's favorite beer? What? A PBR! <laughs> What's a pirate's favorite letter? You think it's the R? But it's the C. <laughs> <laughs>